Hello and welcome to It's Your Business with Mario Tanaguzzi. Joining me today is Jamie Saleh, who is a motivational coach and speaker at Jamie Saleh International, also a former Olympic uh, gold medalist in figure skating. Thanks for joining us today, Jamie. Thank you, Mario, for having me. Well, let me just start, you know, you know obviously you're a motivational coach and speaker. Uh, what's the mood and the sense that you're getting from people these days uh, amid, uh, obviously, this chaos uh, that COVID-19 has uh, thrust upon us? Well, that's a good question. I think that, you know, in general, um, you know, everybody's just really wanting to be, um, have movement and have a little bit more freedom from the, the, the couple months that we were in um, isolation. Totally understand that. Our brains are all about survival and socialization. Um, we all understand that it's important to have um, socialization in our life. Um, and none of us have, have lived through this before, so we don't know how long it's gonna take. We don't know what to expect from it. There's just so many unknowns. But um, what I tell all my clients and, and of course my family is that um, we just, we have to do our part. And, and what does that look like? How, you know, we always talk about being the best version of ourselves when we're going for our vision, but when we're dealing with a pandemic, um, how can you do your part? And how can you be, um, you know, help take care of others, not just yourself? And so the other thing that we want to really focus on is all the good that we already have in our life, because we tend to think about all the things that we can't have or we can't do. Yeah. And that makes us feel really, um, you know, uneasy inside and unsettled. But if you start focusing every single day on the things that you do have, which are your health, and we live in a beautiful country, and whatever, you know, you have in your life, you celebrate that and you give uh, you feel grateful for it. Um, it completely changes your physiology and it really, really helps. Okay. What about uh, from a business standpoint? Uh, you know, obviously tons of entrepreneurs out there uh, feeling the pain uh, and continuing to feel the pain and will so uh, do so for the next few months. Um, I think I saw in, um, in uh, the uh, CFIB, Canadian Federation of Independent Business, a report saying that, you know, one one out of seven small businesses uh, risk closure uh, throughout this. Um, what's your best piece of advice to entrepreneurs who are, are struggling right now and, and who may be just thinking of throwing in the towel, so to speak? Well, I think this is a time for, we, we've heard the word pivoting a lot. Yeah. And it's really about getting creative and figuring out ways outside the way you've always known or the way you've operated before you have to get creative and think about other opportunities and possibilities within your business. Uh, I know for myself, that's what I'm having to do. Um, you know, it's important that I start thinking outside of, um, you know, the way that I was doing things. And um, I just have to think, keep on that mind, keep in the mindset um, that there are possibilities and there are opportunities out there and really honing in on what my vision looks like. So if you're an entrepreneur, you know, is your vision written down or your goals written down? Because right now with so much uncertainty, um, you know, you want to reevaluate all that as well, but you got to make sure that it's written down. Otherwise you don't have that roadmap. You don't have that guidance, you know, in a, a dream or a goal in our head is just a wish. Yeah. And let's get it on paper. So it becomes a plan. And then from there we can take appropriate action with what we're, we're living with today. I imagine that's probably something you learned during your sports career, right? <laughs> yes. Just seeing it all over again. Yeah. So what, speaking of sports, what are some of the key things you learned uh, it, through your career that was, has been helpful or can be helpful for, for people who are uh, in running businesses? You know what? The most important thing um, that I learned and we're dealing with right now is adversity and learning to get through challenging times or as a coach, I call it a dark time. Even, you know, when um, people always say to you, it's not what happens to you, it's how you deal with it. And we know this is true. And so really focusing on uh, what is the gift in all of this? And I know some people are probably rolling their eyes or even looking at me going, are you kidding me? I've lost so much from this. Yeah. There's always a gift from everything and if you choose to find the gift or to if you choose to say like I refuse to get through this COVID time or this time that we're in without getting the gift then then you win and you'll and you'll 
experience a very different result than sitting in victimization. Um, and so that's what sport taught me because, you know, it's kind of like being injured. <laughs> um, and I felt like I was falling behind and everybody else was able to train, but I wasn't. And so I always asked myself, what can I do while I'm injured? What, what can I do to help myself so that when I get back on the ice, I'm a better skater. And so that's basically what I'm applying today to what we're all going through is what can I do today? you know, and, and staying in, in that positive mindset, positivity right now, your attitude is everything. How do you, how do you get to that point? <laughs> like, how do you, uh, it, uh, you know, is it, uh, is it natural for some people or, or is it a, a learned behavior? Uh, just like almost anything else in terms of, you know, talent and, and skills, say in sports? Well, I think it's, it's, you have to decide for that. You have to wake up every single day being grateful for what you already have. And when you come from gratitude, it puts you in a completely different vibration than victimization, right? So as soon as you, you wake up every day and you, you decide that you're going to find the good in the day, you're, you decide that you're going to be positive, um, it becomes a habit. And that's what I trained myself to do as an athlete. I didn't always have, actually, if anything, I had more failures than successes. I had more tough days than I had great days. And so it was all about learning from those experiences and staying positive through them because it's, we are built for this. Yeah. We are incredible human beings. We have power inside of us to get through this, but people, you either choose to evolve or you choose to stay the same way you are. And this is forcing all of us to choose one side or the other and your results are going to be very different. <laughs> It kind of reminds me of, uh, there's a famous uh, quote by a uh, former basketball great Michael Jordan about how many baskets he actually missed in his lifetime, right? And, uh, and it, it, interesting, I don't, know, you're, uh, I don't know if you're a, a baseball follower, but uh, do you know who Mr. October is? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Reggie Jackson, I just realized just the other day that, do you realize that he is the number one all-time person for strikeouts as a batter? Yeah, exactly. So here's a guy that's, uh, you know, a, a home run king, uh, you know, who, uh, who uh, you know, um, was always in the clutch in the World Series, uh, you know, hitting home runs, etc. And yet the number one guy all time in Major League Baseball for strikeouts. So it, it yep. goes to show you, right? So. Exactly. If you, you know, you get up and as long as you're swinging, right, you're going to, keep moving forward and that's the important thing right now is that just don't give up on yourself don't give up on yeah. anything that you absolutely love and that you're passionate about because there is an end to this um we know that yeah yeah so um when you look at uh, the current time when you're talking about positive uh, being positive etc what are the lessons you think we can learn uh, what are, and what are the positives that that will come out of this uh this mess that we're in right now well, um, I can only speak for myself personally, but again, that's another decision that people have to make is what you have to decide that you're going to find um, a gift from this. And you may not know what that gift is right now. I mean, we've all been through things in our lives that were very uncomfortable or that were actually downright awful. Yeah. But later down the road, you go, okay, I see why that happened or I can see that everything happens for a reason, right? But if we can sit right now in this time and go, you know what, I just... I know there's good in this. Um, again, I might not know what that is right now, but I believe that that is the truth. And so as long as you, you're in that mindset, um, it's a way better uh, way of thinking than, again, just that victimization, feeling sorry for yourself and thinking about all the wrong that, or the bad that's happening right now. Yeah. Um, and for me, the lessons are, I've really learned that slowing down is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And we... You know, I, I saw something Brene Brown wrote about how like normal never was. Like if we think that we should go back to what we had, we're, we're crazy and we should actually learn from this. And, you know, slowing down and taking, uh, smelling the roses, as we say, and taking time yeah. to be, being present is, is what's important in life. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great then. Thanks very much for joining us today, Jamie. Thank you again for having me, Mariel. That was awesome. All right, that was uh, Jamie Salé, who was a motivational coach and speaker at Jamie Salé International, based in Edmonton, right? Correct, yes. Okay, and uh, right in the middle of the hockey playoffs, too. Like. <laughs> yeah.
What do you think of that, by the way? Just on the last question, what do you think of that, having uh, Edmonton as, as the hub, uh, so to speak? Yeah, well, um, you know, it's, it's a different kind of situation because it's not something necessarily that the city can capitalize on uh, generating income. You know, there's no people in the stands. And, yeah. But, um, and, of course, you know, it's, it's risky that, you know, people are flocking out to restaurants and things to, to watch. Um, I, I totally get that. Um, but it's that's a risk, you know, that people are yeah. taking with COVID. And um, but it's fun, you know. I, I'm a big hockey fan. Um, but let's just say that I cheer for a different team normally in Alberta, and it's they're down south. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry, sorry. I, I thought this was going to be the end of the conversation, but it leads me to another question. Actually, as an athlete, how would you? Have, like, I, I just don't get it, like, with the hockey uh, performing before nobody. Yeah. Uh, like, how would you, uh, you know, uh, how would you have felt uh, during your career if, if you would have to go out and do an Olympic, you know, skate, a skate and there was nobody uh, watching? It would be definitely very bizarre. I think these guys um, are very determined and very focused on, on the end goal. And I think I applaud that very much. It would not be easy looking at all the banners around where the people normally are sitting. I just, as a figure skater, we, I thrived on an audience and seeing yeah. people in the stands, even if I only had a hundred people in the stands, it was always like, Hey, watch me. Um, this almost reminds me of like when my, my son was starting out in hockey, you know, you just had the parents there. Yeah. And so <laughs> these guys are kind of like the little kids again, just starting to play hockey and they just have their coaches. And then, you know, there's the commentators up, up top and there's t television people but that's it 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 would not be easy so um i applaud them for for taking this very seriously and, and working their butts off i mean the the best part about this playoffs is that my husband said it on tv he said there's never been a playoffs where everybody enters healthy <laughs> yeah you know, and they've had yeah, months off. Yeah. And I mean, I know they have crinks and things wrong here and there, or whatever, just from training. But, you know, in general, uh, you're coming, you're usually coming off the season and uh, you're sore and you're tired. And so this, this isn't the case this time. So we're going to see, I think, a higher level of playoff um, hmm. performance. Interesting. Oh, anyways, thanks again uh, for joining us, Jamie. That was super. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, It's Your Business with Mario Tanaguzzi. Thanks for joining us today. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and, uh, and YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks very much.